All right, these are our first, well, not even first, this is our fall harvest, early fall harvest of apples. Um, these are just the ones that we're gonna probably turn into juice, cider, or applesauce, something along those lines. These come from three separate trees. The parent tree produces this very large yellow fruit, which is super sweet, and it's got a texture very similar to like a pear. It's like almost like an Asian pear kind of texture. It's crisp, but when you bite it, it, it practically melts. Um, and when they're really ripe like this, they're extremely aromatic. So uh, we're always really happy to get these. These ones are my particular favorite. They have an awesome apple taste without um, leaving an aftertaste like some of the really sweet apples do. But I mean, it's, it's a pretty large, large apple, and they're all they're all in along the same size, fist size apples. There's some that are larger. I mean, there's this one's pretty large as an apple goes, I guess. Right. And this one's not quite ripe, but given a couple of days on the counter, it'll probably it'll probably be all right. And they're usually pretty good, even when they're a little underripe. The other tree produce uh, downhill from that that big tree produces these smaller apples like this. This here, this with this kind of almost kind of russety type stripes. Um, good example. They have this very prominent star type pattern to them and um, they're kind of kind of squash looking. And this is uh, this is about an average one. There are some that are slightly larger um, and they get they get green and they, they kind of turn like a pale yellow and then they go by really fast so by the time they get to like let's see if I can find a really yellow one. Probably be able to find one. You might have eaten the best ones. Anyway, so there's those, and then the other tree, a slightly larger one, produces this fruit, which is a more, more rounded fruit. Um, they all have a very similar taste. I guess that's because I'm assuming that the parent tree for the other two, for these, these ones here as well as these, are this, being that it's it's just downhill and underneath the power line. So I can only assume. Um, but anyway, so there's four shopping bags full of apples. We cleared the two small trees. The two small trees are about, oh, there's a decent size one on the second fruit. I'll give you a good idea as to what they look like when they're, I guess, ideal. It's just a wild, you know, wild phenotype or whatever you want to call it. A wild cultivar. So, I mean, and they're really good eating fruits you can eat. Very happy to eat both of these, all three of these uh, fresh. And we've made sauce with them in the past, and it does it does come out to be quite a nice sauce. These apples will pretty much melt into mush almost immediately. These ones here will kind of stay a little bit firm, kind of like add some nice chunkiness to the applesauce, and kind of a, a sweet but very, um, it's got a little tart note to it. And then these ones here add more of a complex sweetness, and you can see here's a good one. Oh, it's got a nice blush on it. And they tend to have this odd, almost like, cleft. Many of them do from this particular tree, which is pretty interesting. There's another one there. So, I was joking with the kids earlier calling them butt crack apples, because that's pretty much what they do. It's a characteristic of them. There's another one that's got kind of a wider stripe on it. So yeah, there's uh, just a small harvest of apples for the morning, and this will get turned into, like I said, juice, applesauce, cider, who knows what. But, uh, yeah, overall pretty happy with the way this is going. The tree that produces these really large fruits still has a, uh, probably 50 pounds of fruit on it anyway. And they're only just starting to get to this, this color now. This was the most ripe one we found. And I think the least ripe one that I took was either this one or this one. And we'll just see how they go. Um, because the tree is so large they come out of, uh, by the time they hit the ground, they're they're screaming along, and they don't survive the fall too well. Uh, being that they're really soft, they tend to get bruised up and smashed up. As a matter of fact, there's one that fell out of the basket on the way out. I was using the fruit picker, and it fell. But like I said, it's awesome. It'll be fine. So, there's our uh, fall yellow apples from the uh, wild trees that grow.
just I guess naturally here on our property. And I should note that uh, as far as bug infestation, it was pretty minimal. I mean, there's a couple, a couple that have some bug damage in them, and I'm sure when I cut them open, they'll be, some of them won't be edible at all. But pigs will eat them, and the chickens will eat them, so that'll be fine. And as we go through them, as long as we're getting the fruit up off the ground and picking all the fruit out of the trees, uh, it'll help to break up the pest cycles anyway. So I've noticed that every year we get more and more good fruit versus infested fruit. So it'll just be a matter of time. And you're always going to have some stuff that gets infested. I mean, we're not trying to kill every damn bug out there, you know. So there it is. Some yellow apples for, uh, for early fall. I'm going to go visit the kids. They're outside picking. Oh. There's another couple more of the large ones. Here's another large one. How's that look? Not bad. Not bad at all.